Hello, everybody. You're very welcome to the BERIC and OECD first one of two webinars on quality of service and quality of experience. Before we hand over the floor to Don Schablon, Director General PTS Sweden and Chair of BERIC this year 2020, and Verena Weber, Head of Unit STI and OCECD, we would like you to pay attention to a couple of items. My name is Teresa Harrigan from Comreg in Ireland, and I, together with Paolo Lupi, from Italy, will be moderating the webinar today. I'll hand you over now to Paolo, who will take you through some of the logistics. Thanks, Paolo. Paolo, I think you're on mute. Thank you, Teresa. So let's start with some instruction for today's webinar. First, the meeting will benefit from BAREC IT support. And it is a combination of a video conference that will be held over the web conference system and a live stream, which is accessible through the BAREC website. We will do our best to assist you, but please be patient in case any difficulties will arise. The web stream, the, the webinar live stream will be published on the BAREC website and we hope that we can all agree to this. Unfortunately, the webinar do not allow for simultaneous interpretation and the meeting will be conducted only in English. There has been possible to send in questions beforehand, but you can also send new questions that could arise today by email or by social media. We would be grateful if you could please mute yourself while not speaking. And we remind you that the mute button is on the bottom left of your screen. And let me just mention that in order to allow time for all the presentation that will be taking place today within the next two hours, we will take our role as moderators very seriously. Therefore, we would like to ask you to keep your presentation within the time frame as we aim to cover all the material today within those two hours. Finally, if for any reason we lose connection with the person speaking, then it could be helpful to close the video within the connection. At this point, it only remains to me to thank you and to introduce Don Sioblom, Director General of PTS, the Sweden NRA, Chair of BAREC for year 2020, and Verena Weber, Head of Unique of Science, Technology and Industry Directorate of the OSC. Please, Don, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, dear participants from BAREC and OECD, dear stakeholders, anyone who watches, if it had not been for this virus, COVID-19, I would have had the pleasure today of welcoming you in person here in Stockholm. And I can tell you that the city is at its most welcoming today. We have clear blue skies, 26 degrees Celsius. The sun got up this morning at 3.31 and it will set only at 22.09 tonight. I think we would have had that marvelous time. But given the circumstances, I am in any case very pleased to welcome you to this webinar and that we have been able to change over to this format we as you've heard it's jointly organized by beric and the oecd and it's the first of two covering the uh, topic of uh, quality of service and quality of experience of electronic communication services i've been well introduced by uh, teresa and paolo and this year's Chair Beric, uh, and I think in that capacity, I'm very pleased that we can continue with the long-standing collaboration between Beric and the OECD. There have been previous uh, uh, collaborations going back to, uh, I believe, at least 2004. And within Beric now, uh, as it is, uh, we have a number of working groups. Uh, at least four of them are currently working on uh, quality of service related topics. And you will hear, hear today from uh, some of them. Uh, we have the, an open internet working group. We have an end user working group, uh, statistics and indicators working group, and uh, finally an international roaming working group, all of who are doing 
work on this, and you will hear more about that soon. Uh, we will present an introduction to work being done at QNS uh, on a European, but also at global level. And I think that's a very good opportunity for us to uh, hear about examples of how uh, QNS has been used in different countries around the world. I'm happy to hear, know that uh, we will have representatives from Korea and France who will make presentations uh, a little bit later in the seminar. And you also heard that there will be a second seminar uh, in a week from now, next Tuesday, the 30th of June, going deeper into some more concrete details, uh, focusing on things like accessibility, e-health, video communication, and uh, capturing uh, quality of experience through standardization. All of that is, is very interesting, but first, uh, I would like to thank the OECD for joining Beric today, shaping these two seminars, moving from physical to uh, virtual uh, formats, and in sharing their insights and experiences uh, on the topics of today. So with those welcoming words, uh, I hand warmly over to Verena Weber, who is the responsible head of unit at OECD who is now up next to give her introduction to today's seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And let me join uh, Director General Ben Sjöblom to welcome you to the first Beric OECD webinar. So while we very much look forward um, to have this joint workshop in Sweden, and in beautiful Stockholm, and now we, we just learned that there is a beautiful um, blue sky, uh, we are nevertheless very pleased um, that you all took the time to participate in this first entirely virtual seminar and that uh, you're joining us um, through WebEx and uh, the Barrick live stream or the YouTube channel. So we thank you for that. And um, in fact, the advantage of such a virtual meeting is uh, that we can allow for a broader geographical reach and we can welcome participants across the globe. So from the OECD, we would like to thank um, Barak, not only for the fruitful cooperation uh, along all those years, but also for setting up the logistics for these workshops. And as Ben mentioned, we have quite a long standing cooperation on those. And the aim here is really um, to bring the expertise of both organizations together. So we typically select one concrete topic um, to take a deep dive. Um, to get into technical aspects that are relevant for both policymaking and regulation and um, to also work on topics um, that are rather new to us. So this time we will focus in two webinars on quality of service. And when we started to plan for this workshop, we had no idea actually how timely this discussion would become. So we assume that most of you are joining us uh, from home using video. So this basically means that just being connected is not enough. Uh, what we need is really a high quality connection. Uh, recently, we have seen um, articles in the Financial Times, and you probably also experienced yourselves, um, that this COVID health emergency has accelerated um, the digital transformation and pushed us two years ahead in this transformation uh, compared to a situation where it would just be business as usual. And um, while it's quite hard to say at this stage, um, we think um, that a lot of those developments are probably here to stay. So, for example, um, in France, um, there has been a massive introduction of medical video consultations. So, and this is something we couldn't have imagined a couple of months ago. We also see first estimates uh, that think that um, people uh, will continue uh, to work from home and they will do so on a regular basis. So this is also about to increase. So this means is that what we need um, is the right tools and really a high quality internet connection to be able to do all of this. But now, what exactly is a high quality internet connection and how can we measure the quality of service? Um, 
and um, how can we actually use those measurements for better policy making. So at the OECD, um, so far we have started to measure one component of quality of service, um, which um, is basically the download speed of the connection. And we will hear more about this from Alexia and Fred and also about the history. So we have further been learning from OECD countries what they do in this respect. And we invited, um, as Dan mentioned, um, two countries um, that have quite innovative approaches in this respect, uh, which are France and Korea. And finally, um, we are very eager to learn more about Derek's current work in this area. And with this, I would like to turn to Therese and Paolo and wish us all uh, an insightful webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Verena and Dan, for opening the webinar. Uh, Paolo and I are not only moderators, but we're also co-chairs of one of the working groups that Don mentioned in the opening speech. Um, the End Users Working Group is the working group responsible for these quality of service webinars. And we recently published um, uh, guidelines, which Paolo will uh, share with you. In addition, we're delighted to welcome Klaus Nein um, from Traficom Finland here today, who will share some insights into the work that the Open Internet Working Group has been doing. So I'll pass you over to Paolo to uh, share our Beric work. Can the presentation start? Thank you, Therese. I will share the presentation of Barack Activities on QS with Klaus Nieminen, and I will start by presenting the Barack guidelines detailing the quality of service parameters before handing the floor to him. Next slide, please. We all know how important it is for our everyday activities the correct functioning of electronic communication services and how much we rely on them. And these considerations have been further reinforced by the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic and by the resulting massive adoption of smart working system and online education tools. In this context, it is easy to understand how much QS is important. At the same time, we can say that the increasing complexity of networks and services makes QoS more complex, not only to manage, but also to measure and to regulate. This is mainly due to the fact that QoS can be impacted by many factors at the network, le at the network level and along the value chain, including devices, hardware, infrastructure, services, applications. This is even more true when we in the next webinar, we talk about quality of experience. What we can understand is that quality of services has therefore become a variable, which together with prices and quantities is of very important interest to regulators, which have among their goals to help to improve the end user experience, to lead to a greater competition and investment within the sector, and to be able to try to increase the social welfare in order to let that all the different players at the different levels of the value chain and the consumers can benefit within the digital e e ecosystem. Um, the European Commission and BEREC have worked a lot and have undertaken a complex work aimed at achieving one of the very clear objectives of the electronic, the new European Electronic Communication Code that is empowering and protecting end users. Next slide, please. Um, next slide, please.
Oh, thank you. Um, and in fact, Barrick was given the task by Article 104 of the European Electronic Communication Code to develop a set of guidelines in order to contribute to a consistent application of the article, whose main provision is to empower national regulatory agencies to require service providers to publish comprehensive, comparable, reliable and user-friendly information on QoS, when it can be shown that some information is not effectively available. We were asked to do it by June the 21st of 2020, but we were able to anticipate, to anticipate the finalization of the guidelines to October 2019. Uh, Article 104 clarifies that the guidelines have to be drafted in close cooperation with the Commission, and we had a lot of discussion with the Commission in order to improve and craft and draft in the best possible way these guidelines. And the guidelines have to clarify and define which QoS parameters and measure methods have to be defined for ICS and for, in, for information communication services and internet access services. Uh, which quality of service parameters and measure methods have to be defined for end user with disabilities, and also to specify the content and format of publication of such information. And finally, another requirement of the code was to specify within the guidelines which were the quality certification mechanisms to be adopted for QS indicators. Next slide, please. Uh, of course, being these guidelines aimed at contributing to a consistent application of the law, uh, what, we did, what we did was uh, we started our activities with a benchmarking exercise. We issued questionnaires to all NRAs, um, asking them to specify which um, QS indicators they had in place, and the pictures that now you can see on the screen somehow summarize that information. You can see that there were a number of indicators which were asked and required by many NRAs, like supply time for connection, fault rates for access lines, fault repair times, which were, by the way, also some of the indicators which are included within um, Annex number 10 of the Electronic Communication Code, which was given by the code as a starting point uh, in uh, defining our indicators. But we can also see that there were some others um, indicators which were quite common among uh, NRAs. In general, on the other hand, while some of them were quite common, is also true that only less of the European member states were asking the publication of those indicators. Next slide, please. And this slide probably summarizes better in which areas the uh, indicators were required and measured by uh, European NRAs. The, the, the first pie chart on the upper left of the slide uh, shows that probably less than half of the European NRAs were having in place some uh, indicators and measures for mobile services. Um, on the other end, uh, on the right hand side, we can see the, the pie chart which shows the measures which were put in place by European NRAs to consider, uh, to measure the quality of services for uh, end users with disabilities. And you can see that only 12 NRAs had those measures in place. And, uh, as internet access um, services measures are concerned, the, the histogram on the upper, on the lower uh, half of the screen shows that 
most of the NRAs were, and were measuring the minimum guaranteed speeds for fixed and mobile networks and uh, um, less than actually 12 NRAs were uh, measuring uh, the um, publicly available measurement of the achievable speeds for the services and only um, four NRAs were measuring those speeds by means of drive test or railway journeys. Next slide, please. Uh, in the end, uh, after uh, a lot of discussions uh, among uh, uh, the drafting team with the single member states after we received the information on the measures they had in place, we uh, defined a set of four sets of indicators. A first set of indicators which were more or less those which were contained in Annex 10 for which we defined uh, the, for which we defined the, the measurement methods and clarified the standard. Uh, three uh, indicators for QS parameters for internet access services. Then we defined a couple of indicators on the QS parameters, which were not set out in Annex 10, but that we found which were particularly common uh, among member countries from our benchmarking exercises. And then we define three uh, QS parameters for end users with disabilities. One related to the quality of voice communication, clarifying the bands within which the, the within which the, the communication, the voice communication should uh, be possible to be made. Another indicator, real time text, and another one of video communication, specifying the the characteristics of these uh, video communication, like size of the device. This is the only case where we. Um, also consider some QOE uh, parameters. Next slide, please. Finally, in these guidelines, we also define some um, guidelines on the publication information, saying uh, that NRA may require SP uh, service provide to publish comprehensive, comparable, reliable, user-friendly, and up-to-date information. And we try to give a meaning to each with to each of these words. We also clarify how this information should be accessible and that. Uh, NRA can oblige service provide to direct publish information via their own communication channel or through third parties. And the last part of the guidelines was dedicated to the quality certification mechanisms, and where we clarified which factors are to be taken into account when choosing a quality certification mechanism, and specified that the certification mechanism shall ensure that the quality model fulfills some specific requirements. And with this, I have finished my presentation and will end the floor to Klaus. Many thanks, Paolo, and good afternoon also from my behalf. I'm Klaus Nieminen, the co-chair for PEREX Open Internet Working Group, and I'm giving you a quick overview on Open Internet Working Group work regarding this. Next slide, please. Okay, PEREX has been working with Internet Access Service Quality for long, and I think this uh, picture from 2011 illustrates still quite well how complex this topic is. First, the end user perceives quality of experience. An ISP promises a certain network performance. But the network performance differs from end-to-end -end quality of service, and the quality of experience is subjective. Our focus is on Internet Access Service quality, as the regulatory tasks are related to it. In 2016, we got new tasks from the Open Internet Regulation, as shown on this slide. And what do we mean by Internet Access Service Quality? Uh, basically, that's ISP's own network performance plus the interconnection, as, as we recommend that to be measured. Next slide, please. But quality of service, it's much more 
than just the best effort internet. Networks provide different edit quality of service and optimization for certain services. Some functions may be end user controlled, aka application agnostic, and some functions are ISP controlled that are then application dependent. This picture illustrates the regulatory framework, how the different quality of service uh, uh, setups can be provided in Europe. The principal rule is that all traffic should be treated equally. However, ISPs can still provide different edit quality of service levels, categories of traffic and specialized services. And there are also exceptions, e.g. to comply with the regulatory requirements. So I would say that the, the capabilities and tools are there to provide the quality that's needed. But I think this is uh, good to understand that it's not only the best effort internet, but it's also what kind of the quality of service is offered for certain services and, and what kind of the connectivity services are available. Next slide. Um, though Open Internet Working Group has published multiple reports uh, related to quality of service uh, during past 10 years, and the regulatory assessment methodology is the latest one. Uh, it contains guidance on harmonized quality of service measurement methodology, detecting traffic managed practices that impact, impact certain applications, factors to be taken into account, and assessing the measurement results. I think this is a rather crucial piece because, uh, I mean, you can measure quality, but you have to understand what it means if the, the measurement results are correct and what factors need to be taken into account. Also, the, the validation of the collected measurement results is rather important. Then you are trying to make the assessment on the market level. And also some guidance regarding the measurement system certification. The work still continues. I mean, we are far from ready on this matter. Uh, we are continuing sharing the information and best practices, supporting NRAs in the national measurement system deployments. And one, one, I would say, quite interesting piece is benchmarking the measurement system, meaning lab testing. We had planned to do this uh, uh, this spring, however, the COVID-19 delayed the work. And I, I can't really tell that what would be the, the good timing to do it, but we are really waiting to get this lab testing done. The discussions regarding the common measurement tool are still ongoing, and unfortunately I can't tell you right now much more about that, but I would say that uh, the, the quality of service measurement methodology may still need to be revised after we have done the, the lab testing, and also by the, the experience uh, received by the NRAs. Thank you very much for listening. I think that was all from my side. Thank you, Cloud. Thank you. Um, we have seen in our work that NRAs address issues related to quality of service in different ways. There are some NRAs we focus more on some issues. Other NRAs focus more on other issues. Uh, for this reason, it will be interesting to hear how, OSC, how OSCD regards this issue and how different member states address issues related to QoS and in particular, anticipating probably next webinar, uh, whether uh, there are any activities related to quality of experience. It is therefore for me a pleasure to introduce Alexia Gonzalez Fanfalone and Frederic Burassa from the OSCD that will give us a view on what is on, what's going on within the OSCD in relation to quality of service. Please, Alexia and Frederic, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair, Paolo, Teresa. Good afternoon, fellow OCD and Barrett colleagues. It is a great honor for the OCD to briefly present the work that we've been conducting to measure quality of broadband over the years. Next slide, please. 
Reliable connectivity is essential for the digital transformation as it facilitates the interactions between people, organizations, but also machines. And quite quickly, gigabit networks and 5G are becoming the underlying connectivity behind Internet of Things and artificial intelligence, which have applications across all sectors of the economy. Therefore, there's an increasing demand for communication infrastructure to keep up with the pace of data transmission requirements. Moreover, we've seen with the COVID-19 health emergency that the demand for, for broadband has increased. For example, some operators experienced 60% internet traffic growth compared to the scenario without the crisis. This just underscores even more the importance of connectivity. And we're increasingly moving towards a distance economy with remote learning, remote health, remote mining, surgery, et cetera. And in this context, measuring quality of service of the connections becomes not only important, but essential. Next slide, please. So for some time now, the OCD has examined the approaches being taken in member countries to measure broadband performance. And quality of service of broadband can be assessed in several dimensions. Over the past eight years, we have focused on one main one, as uh, Verena uh, mentioned, download speeds. And already in this dimension, when you measure it, it really, there's going to be difference depending on the methodology used, the sample selection, and the access. Also, if it's so fixed in mobile broadband connection, et cetera, as, as very well placed as from Klaus uh, in the previous presentation. There are other measures that will became, become increasingly important, such as latency and reliability, and perhaps even resilience of networks. And with the next evolution of broadband networks, the availability of wholesale inputs that really determine and affect um, the performance of broadband will become increasingly important. For example, the availability of fiber backhaul. Next slide, please. And OECD governments have been aware of the importance of measuring the actual performance as opposed to the advertised one as it is critical to meet various policy objectives. For example, it's a fundamental metric for consumers to make informed choices and then be able to arbitrage and foster competition. For policymakers and regulators, being able to assess broadband performance is essential to ensure the accessibility of the service, such as education, health, and so forth, but other, also to understand whether services are meeting their goals for overall market development competition, coverage, investment. And since 2012, we have been working on achieving a harmonized measurement approach for download speeds, as my colleague Fred will, will mention in a little while. And going forward, the, our working party in communication, infrastructure and service policy, WPCISP, is currently working on the revision of the 2004 recommendation of the Council on Broadband Development, where countries are discussing whether to include, and many want to include, notions of quality of service. I will hand over my, the floor to my colleague, Fred, to give us a, a hint of the background on, on this road. Uh, thank you, Alexia. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, now we will see uh, the milestones of the quality of service in the German of the OECD. In uh, 2011, the OECD Council on uh, Recommendation and Principles for Internet Policy Making set out uh, the need to develop reliable data for policy making process. Accordingly, the OECD organized two workshops on broadband networks. The first held in Washington in 2011 and the second in London in 2012. The workshops considered, among others, topic, uh, the measurement of advertising and actual broadband performance. Two approaches were agreed on actual performance measurement. A short term approach, first, um, to adapt the best currently available data sets, such as the ones provided by private entities, and a longer term approach <coughs> sorry, to work on achieving a data set based on common methodologies of measuring broadband speed. Following the London workshop on broadband metrics in June 2012, a set of, of recommendations were published. Among them were to collect fixed broadband data according, according to six different speed tiers, to clearly define broadband technology categories, uh, to collect data on broadband availability, 
and to make the national building maps available, which are promised to be on the building project. Next slide, please. In 2014, the ACB published a report on Access Network Speed Test, which is available in the as well. Um, the, re the report analyzes measurement technique and technical issues, uh, explores the future and longer term measurement solutions, and lists uh, all national official measurement approaches. Future challenges are also underlined in the report, such as Parameters which are not yet well measured, like uh, latency, Jupiter, robustness, and speed measurement of mobile broadband, which is very important but remains quite challenging. Other OECD reports um, highlight the importance of measurement, like the Digital Economy Act in 2015, uh, the operators and their future, the role of 5G networks. Uh, IoT is a new application, which was reported from 2019 and the forthcoming digital economy update in 2020. So, talk about that issue. Uh, next slide, please. Next again. Where we stand. Uh, now, all OECD member countries have broadband maps available online on their regulatory website. Uh, most of them. These maps show the availability of broadband by technologies at a regional, municipal, or sometimes at street level. Uh, some of these maps even give the connections speed tier uh, details, like uh, the map of Sweden shows shown here. Uh, the OECD broadband portal lists all member countries' national broadband maps. Next slide. Um, the percentage of fixed broadband subscription by agreed speed teams uh, was not easy to collect at first, but now we have a really normalized set of data. We usually present the speed tiers projected on fixed broadband subscription for 100 inhabitants, but uh, please, next, next slide. Uh, but speed tiers can also be presented simply as a percentage of uh, fixed broadband subscription. As we see on the graph, a large number of countries uh, had in 2018 a significant share of the physical uh, subscription with the speed of 100 megabytes per second. Nine countries had more than 50% of their subscription above 100 megabytes per second. Um, uh, Korea and Sweden being the, the leaders. Next slide. Uh, advertised uh, broadband speeds may differ from actual speed experience by user, as we said before. Uh, the OECD often relies on external sources on private entities for actual broadband speed measurements to obtain comparable national average or fixed speeds. These entities are MLAB, ICMA, and STEAM. Uh, ACAMA used to, uh, to be an interesting source, but now they don't update their. UCLA and MLAB uh, compile results from speed tests conducted by users who actively measure their actual speed uh, to access the internet. Still, data uh, reflects the speed of users using one of the most uh, IP intensive applications, which is online. online Different approaches of speed, me speed measurements are reviewed in the report operators and data. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. At, at the OECD, measurement of digital divide is increasingly uh, is, is increasingly about uh, measuring the uh, quality of broadband connection, which means uh, connection that speed uh, high enough to allow uh, the use of every application. Graph shown uh, shows a uh, rural. Households access to fixed broadband connection with a speed of about uh, 30 megabytes per second. Next slide, please. Uh, the measurement of mobile broadband speed remains a challenge, uh, as noted in our previous work. The OECD do not collect the data from the other countries yet. Uh, external uh, sources like Open Signal or UCLA. Publishes data um, by country. Um, it, it, uh, the data collected by OpenSignal uh, 
which uh, includes different uh, weapon generation. And provide Excuse me, Frederick, yes. could you please move uh, closer to the microphone because it's uh, a very... Oh, yeah. uh, um, I'm really sorry. We can hear you. Thank you. I'm very close, actually. Uh, I, have, I, have it, I have it next to my mouth. Okay, well... Um, Please try closer, thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, OpenSignal uh, collects data, uh, real-time data from uh, mobile phone users that have downloaded the application on their smartphone. So uh, I'm done with my part. I'm sorry if you didn't uh, hear, hear me well. I I didn't check the chat while I was talking, so I'm sorry. Uh, it's to you, Alex. Hi, thank you, Fred. Uh, next slide, please. So as, as Fred said, there's been, uh, so since 2012, we have a long road of measuring download speeds for, for countries and actually trying to measure actual speeds for broadband connections and for fixed broadband it has been easier and we've uh, noticed in a report in 2014 and going forward for mobile broadband has become more challenging and with all of this uh, regulators are being quite innovative and uh, relying on, on sources such as crowdsourcing or actually in-field measurements to towards an approach of called data-driven regulation that is disclosing information to steer communication markets in the right direction and this is emerging, it's an emerging trend in OCD countries, and we'll have later the presentations by two very good examples, RCEP in France and the National Information Agency in Korea. Um, RCEP in France uh, takes uh, priority to do this, to, to measure quality of communication networks, uh, to foster that competition dimension of it, so that it's not only limited to prices, but also network quality. And in a similar fashion, the Korean government through the NIA um, they do in-field measurements, and when they publish these results, they have noticed that um, at each publication, uh, operators have increased their network quality. So it's a way of, of driving change through, through information. Next slide. So now going forward, um, the next generation of wireless networks, 5G, as well as uh, high-capacity fixed networks, as known in the European uh, Union, but uh, gigabit networks otherwise, um, all of this will lead us to a world where the combination of, of data transmission requirements of Internet of Things and AI um, will pose new challenges on network infrastructure, as I was mentioning in, at the beginning. And this will go through health, transport industry, through smart hospitals, fully automated vehicles, or connected factories. And with all of this, there will be a, 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 a real need to go to quality of service through a different, um, a different way, which is not only end user seen as B to C, business to consumer, but end user being also vertical industries of business to business. Next slide, please. Therefore, uh, measures on resilience and robustness of networks will become increasingly important, latency and reliability, and, and this will be key for usage case scenarios of, for example, 5G, where that envisions already an Internet of Things world in mind with different applications. For example, massive and dispersed machine communications or sensors for agriculture will not have the same network requirements, therefore quality of service requirements then critical IoT applications such as remote surgery or fully automated vehicles where the life of someone might be on the line. So um, given, given this diversity, networks will also need to be flexible enough. And if, if it, this flexibility will come in the way of network slices catered for different usage scenarios, are we talking about quality of service for different slices? As, and these can be done by service levels agreement for, for each of the sizes. But these are things that we will need to start talk more and more about and, and how we're going to go about measuring that. Also, um, and, and very importantly, the ultimate, ultimately the performance of broadband networks depends a lot on the availability of the wholesale inputs. And for wireless, it's both a spectrum, but also the availability, availability of fiber backhaul. And one clear trend with 5G is with the need of having um, antennas closer to the user, what we know as uh, network densification, requires high investments, but it, it also um, puts into, into light the importance of the availability of this uh, wholesale input. 
So it's, it's not a quality of service measurement at, at the end, but trying to see what are the underlining factors that will determine the performance of broadband ultimately. And also more, there will be uh, increasingly more discussions on how to measure digital security of networks. Next slide, please. So to wrap up uh, the role of the OECD in, in broadband quality of service measurement going forward, as we see it, we really have had such an incredible collaboration with Barrick throughout the years, as mentioned by Barina and Director General Dan Sushbaum. A recent example of this collaboration was in 2018 when we were working on harmonizing a definition for Internet of Things with our report IoT Measurement and Applications. And we collaborated back then with Barrick Chair, which was Comreg. And we worked, who at the time they're in their program of work and budget was working on, on a similar survey for EU countries and Barrick came to our working party. So this is just one of many examples of, of our continued collaboration. And because our role, the OECD and Barrick is really of harmonizing those measurement and measurements. When we talk about measurements, a lot is definitions as Apollo said at the beginning in the Barrick's presentation. Um, we, we have to see what the road we have already uh, done so far and what's ahead. So, for example, what we have achieved so far is on download speeds, but this is only one dimension of quality of service. There's, and it's a long road that started for us back in 2011, 2012. But going forward for other dimensions of quality of service, um, such as, for example, reliability or latency, um, uh, we need to, to see how we're going to go about it and how harmonization will, will become. And especially um, improving mobile network uh, quality of service indicators and also indicators at the wholesale level that influence the performance of broadband networks. Finally, to wrap up, uh, we're, as I said, beginning, we're currently under the discussion of the revision of the 2004 recommendation on broadband development. And these notions of quality of service that are, are being discussed, for example, ensuring resilient, reliable, and secure, high quality broadband networks are things that are in the mind of all OECD regulators. And we surely hope that we can continue this very fruitful collaboration with Barrick for the road ahead of us. Thank you very much for, for your kind attention. Thank you, Alexia and Frederick, for giving an overview on the quality of service within OECD. Um, Perhaps if I could just do two, two items that you mentioned that um, I, I could raise questions on. One is in relation in your presentation, you spoke about the quality of service uh, for network slices and uh, the high investment involved in this area as well. So I suppose I'd like to ask, has OECD started to explore indicators related to backhaul availability? And the second question then, is uh, with regard to the output from the London workshop in 2012, where you have a harmonized set of speed uh, tiers, um, I, I suppose uh, we wonder what were the key challenges really around trying to establish common speed tiers on download uh, speeds within the OECD countries? So maybe if you could take those two questions, that would be great. Thank you. Of course. Thank you, Theresa. Um, so in thinking of the question on fiber backhaul availability, because so far we have um, indicators on fiber to the home descriptions, and we have been using this as a, as a proxy for it, but um, it's not quite accurate. And on the DEO, the Digital Economy Outlook uh, questionnaire we sent for the upcoming uh, edition, which would be 2020, we did ask countries about this specific question. Um, it was good to to scope whether this was a case or not. Most countries are not starting to collect that yet, but there are some countries that are, for example, Sweden, which is interesting to, to start uh, scoping and see if in the future we can get some more indicators on the wholesale level. And regarding um, how difficult it was to get to this B tiers, I will relay this question to a colleague, uh, Fred, because even though he looks very young, he was there and the workshop back then. And um, one main issue was regarding the definition of broadband itself and an alternative that was posed was the speed tiers. Yeah, thank you, Alexia. You can come, complete uh, if you have uh, something else to say, but it's true that um, the main challenge was uh, that eight years ago, in 2012, there, 
there was not a clear definition of broadband, at least for the baseline school. Uh, many institutions like the ITU, the European Commission, the FCC, or the CITC in Canada had different definitions. So we had to find something that uh, was uh, harmonized, that all countries uh, would. We had to find a way to uh, to have a basic a baseline definition with uh, uh, differentiation, so countries can adapt to their national uh, uh, reality. So, so this is why we ended up with tiers. So we, we took the baseline to hundred and fifty six. I don't know if it's quite low, but we had no choice because some countries had even lower baseline speeds, and and then we uh, put, uh, first to like two, and then another one. After Maybe. So uh, countries could uh, reflect their own uh, their own uh, their school quality. So it, it was it, it was not easy at first because uh, many institutions tried to uh, develop their own uh, definitions. So there was uh, some kind of that, that's great. Thank uh, you. Discussion. Thank you very much, Frederica and uh, Alexia. Um, in, in your presentation, you mentioned about uh, France and, and, and the work that's being done there. And I suppose uh, we're delighted to have Audrey Goffey with us today from RCEP, who will uh, give us a view on how quality of service is used as a policy tool. Uh, please, Audrey, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Therese. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope that everyone can uh, see me and hear me well. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the OECD and Derek for inviting us today to talk about QS used as a policy tool in France. Uh, it's a great honor. Um, so my name is Audrey. I'm part of the Mobile Coverage and Investment Unit um, at RCEP, and I'll be doing this presentation. Um, next slide, please. So my first slide is an introductory slide about what we called uh, RCEP's data-driven regulation policy, uh, which is a policy that has been implemented uh, at RCEP uh, for many years now. Uh, so as you can see, the, the first step is to collect data from several producers, uh, that includes RCEP, but also operators, um, users alerts, partners data or crowdsourcing data. Uh, the second step is to stock and analyze this data and in case of a uh, policy breach uh, to sanction uh, this policy breach. Uh, the third step is to publish information to end users. Um, this can be in the form of either formatted information, improved maps or observatories, but also in the form of raw data in open data. And the final step hopefully is to change behaviors with the virtuous circles uh, indeed, the public publication of such data would encourage actors to invest in order to di differentiate themselves from their competitors, but also to stimulate public debate, uh, notably on coverage obligations for our communities. Um, next slide, please. Uh, my second introductory slide is uh, presenting our user information tool on mobile networks, Moreso Mobile, or My Mobile Network in English. Um, Moreso Mobile uh, actually shows two com complementary dim dimensions, giving end users a photography of mobile coverage and QE, QoS in France. Um, so the first of these two dimensions is mobile coverage. As you can see from the, the picture, uh, we display mobile coverage maps uh, in calls text, so in 2Gs, and in mobile internet, 3G and 4G. Uh, these are theoretical data established by the operators, by computer simulations, and verified by RCEP. Um, the, second com the second dimension is the dimension of quality of service, or QS. Uh, and it actually displays the results of RCEP's annual QS campaign carried out indoor, outdoor, and in car. These, these are obviously measured data uh, that are test carried out by RCEP through a service provider. And all of this information is published in open data on the website data.gov.fr. Um, next slide, please. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so mobile coverage. So you were probably asking yourself, why is she telling us about mobile coverage while this is a seminar about QS? Well, this is because we actually uh, verify the map that operators are sending us. And this is what I'm going to talk a bit about uh, right now. 
So the verification process for these coverage maps, um, so you can see here the three steps. First step, MNOs provide our set with coverage maps uh, for voice and text and data. Uh, so to give you a uh, an idea about the frequency of this uh, publication, uh, we do receive 4G each trimester, and we do receive 2G and 3G maps uh, each semester. Uh, the reason being that 4G um, rollout is uh, changing more frequent, frequently now than um, uh, 2G and 3G. This is the reason why they provide us the maps more frequently. Uh, second step, also publishes these maps on Horizon Mobile and Open Data. And third step, which kind of intervenes in the middle, um, we do carry out a yearly accessibility campaign to verify the re reliability of these coverage maps. Um, so we call it accessibility campaign uh, because this campaign are meant to test uh, the capacity of end users to access uh, the network. Uh, next slide, please. So this accessibility campaign, um, as I've told you, it is a yearly campaign uh, which alternates between voice text and data. Uh, it is a campaign that is being funded by the operators. Uh, and it covers each year approximately 30,000 kilometers square uh, in approximately 10 to 15 zones. So that's what you can see on the right right hand side of the of the slide. You can see each of the blue uh, zones that are the zones that we measure. Um, the tests, as I was saying before, are meant to uh, um, are meant to test the ability of end users to access the network, and these are quite light tests. So for calls and texts, it is the success rate for obtaining a ringtone under 30 seconds. And for data, it is uh, the download of a small file file under 15 seconds. We have approximately 200,000 measurement points um, a year. And we do consider a coverage map uh, reliable if 95% or more of the tests carried out in the zone deemed covered by the given operator are successful. So we actually see that operators have an obligation of results rather rather than an obligation of means. They have uh, to comply with this 95% reliability rate. So what do we do if a map uh, does not pass the 95 uh, reliability threshold? Well, there's a, there are three courses of action possible. The first course of action possible is a local rectification of the map or rectification of the simulation software's settings. The second course of action uh, is uh, local action on the radio equipment, so on the field, with no modification of the coverage map. And the third course of action is the identification of the cause of a failure, for instance, a site breakdown, uh, with no modification of the map uh, either. Um, so I think one of the questions on the seminar was, are operators delivering what they promise? Uh, we can certainly see that these accessibility uh, campaigns actually help us make sure that they deliver bo uh, both what they promise, so these are the coverage maps, and also what they have to, because the tests uh, used to verify the uh, operator's uh, coverage obligations are actually quite similar to those tests. Um, a new segment here. Uh, regards the uh, regarding the um, um, the increase, I mean, uh, yeah, the increase in the reliability threshold from 95 to 98 percent. So we recently increased this reliability threshold uh, for several reasons. First of all, because the consumers' demand uh, toward the precision and the reliability of mobile information have increased, but also because users had reported to us differences between the maps and uh, the user experience on the field. And also because in our accessibility campaigns, uh, we've actually uh, uh, seen that uh, operators had di different reliability rates. So obviously it's impossible with software simulations to reach 100% reliability rate, but we could see quite dif important differences between operators showing that they could actually uh, improve I and mean, do their best efforts to reach the maximum uh, reliability uh, rate. So we did a public consultation on raising these reliability thresholds. Uh, we published a decision recently, uh, re yeah, a decision recently and uh, we should receive the first MIPS uh, by the operators with this 98% 90, reliability rate before the end of the year 2020. Um, so this reliability threshold of 98% uh, actually uh, hides three levels 
of reliability rates. So for the for the overall campaign, uh, the reliability threshold should be at 90, uh, 98%. Uh, it should also be at 98% for every zone uh, above 1,000 kilometers square. But at the local scale, uh, each zone of uh, over 100 kilometers square uh, should reach a reliability rate of uh, 95%. This is because obviously at a small zone, it is more difficult uh, to be uh, precise uh, uh, with the simulation uh, software than at a bigger scale. Um, next slide. So I'm now switching to the other side of Mourizo Mobile, uh, to the quality of service campaign conducted by RCEP. Thank you. Uh, so RCEP's annual QS campaign is, a, is also a yearly campaign, uh, which results are published each fall. So obviously this year the, the schedule is going to be a bit delayed because of the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, we are still processing when we're going to be able to do the measurements and when we're going to be able to publish the results. Uh, this QS campaign is also funded by operators. Uh, the, the campaign is carried out in on the whole territory, uh, both mainland and overseas territory. You can see on the right hand of the slide um, the points where uh, the me measurements have been carried out. In blue, the measurements in places of life, and in green, the measurement on transport paths. Um, and this represents a, a global number, uh, a global volume of approximately 1.5 uh, million measurement points uh, in the whole territory. So the test, just to give it, uh, to to describe a bit uh, in more precision to give more details about this test. On text, uh, it is receiving a text message under 10 seconds. For calls, it is uh, the ability to maintain a two minute phone call with perfect quality. And also the quality of the phone call is being assessed. Uh, with regards to data, uh, the web test is uh, loading a web page under 10 seconds. The download test is uh, being able to receive a 10 MO file or end sending a 2 MO file under 60 seconds. The speed test is just measuring downlink and uplink speed. And finally, the streaming test uh, is uh, the success rate for watching a two minute, a, a two minutes HD video in perfect quality. And the quality of the video is also, uh, also measured. Next slide, thank you very much. Um, so this slide shows a bit uh, of the insights of the of the results of the 2019 QoS uh, campaign results. So as you can see on the on the top part of the slide, um, we we have an increase in the average speed in uh, megabits per second. Um, we're actually quite satisfied with the results this year that show a 44% uh, uh, increase uh, of the, of the um, average speed in high density and medium density areas. Uh, we can also be quite proud of the results in the rural areas, as we can see a plus 100% uh, increase. And I think um, one of the, the other questions that was asked to me during the seminar was, does publishing of QS data empower end users and enhance quality of networks? Well, it's always a bit difficult to see whether it is actually our QS campaign who, which helped to improve uh, the QS results of the operators. Uh, but we hope so. And anyway, we can witness uh, that, the, uh, that the quality of uh, at least uh, the average speed has increased uh, qu quite a lot. Um, and also an interesting factor is that uh, we've seen, so you can see on the on the bottom, bottom part of the, of the slide, that uh, RCEP also does a ranking of the operators uh, in the whole territories, but also in high density, density medium density, and rural areas. Um, and we can see, we have seen operators uh, uh, such as Big Telecom, for instance, as you can see on the on the lower part of the slide, which is the number one operator in rural areas. Well, they have done these advertisement campaigns saying, yes, according to our SEPS QRS uh, yearly campaign, we are the best operators uh, in rural areas. So please, uh, if you live in this area, pick us as your operator. Uh, so we can see that at least uh, this campaign matters to the operators and they try to do well, and they certainly take the opportunity to uh, to advertise um, about this, uh, the results of this campaign. Uh, next slide, please. 
the new segment and quality of service is um, that we are now integrating measurement uh, tests carried out by third parties to Mouret the Mobile. Um, indeed, in late uh, 2018, we published two tools enabling third parties to carry out to carry out their own tests. So this can be local collectivities, companies, uh, public services, etc. So these two tools are first the rig, what we call the regulators kit, which is a guide of RCEPs ARC measurement protocol in control environment, uh, both for accessibility tests, which I've described earlier, and for QoS tests, which I've just explained. Um, and this regulators kit provides reusable technical specification. So it's really uh, for the test carried in a control environment um, in opposition to uh, the crowdsourcing sourcing tests. So we try to neutralize um, any other variables uh, that could impact the results of the test. For instance, uh, the, mo the mobile picked to run the test. So we have four state of the art mo mobiles uh, running the text tests for each of the operators at the same time. And the second tool is a code of conduct uh, for crowdsourcing actors, setting minimum transparency and quality standards. Uh, the in interesting factor about this code of conduct, so for crowdsourcing apps, uh, is that it, it applies to both fixed and mobile actors. And um, crowdsourcing actors can declare themselves compliant to this code of conduct. Um, so it's actually a uh, self-compliance uh, approach, and RCEP does not um, uh, label uh, these uh, actors. They have to do them. They have to kind of do it themselves. On the fixed part, um, I'm just doing a, a, a tiny parenthesis about uh, uh, fixed QS here. Um, the actors that have declared themselves compliant to the code of conduct will be eligible uh, to the Access ID Card API, uh, which uh, Alex um, Alexia, you were mentioning earlier, uh, which is an API which uh, an API which will be um, integrated into um, fixed um, uh, internet boxes uh, to character users environment and uh, and. Um, uh, and increase the reliability of fixed QS, QS measurements. So operators have already started to develop this API, and it should be implemented in, implemented in nearly all of the uh, internet boxes in July 2020. Um, the code of conduct that we published in late uh, 2018 for um, uh, for crowdsourcing actors will be updated by uh, this summer, the summer 2020. Next slide, please. Um, and so we recently published, uh, I mean, since the release of these two tools, a lot of actors have started to carry out their own measurement. And we recently started publishing uh, these campaigns, uh, this, the results of this campaign on April 10th. Uh, we published for the first time on Mouret Mobile the results of the test carried out by third parties on several territories and also on the railway network. So what you can see on the on the top of the uh, of this slide uh, is one of uh, France's department, uh, département du Cher. Uh, on the left, you can see what it looks like uh, when you look at the results of RCEP's uh, QoS yearly campaign. So it's quite, I mean, obviously we do this campaign at the scale of the whole territory. So we have a few measurement points in this department but not that many. And on the right, you can see uh, what it looks like when you upload the um, the results of the uh, campaign carried out by the local authorities. You can see that there's a much more, uh, much bigger density of points of measurement points uh, on this uh, on this area. So publishing this data uh, provides end users and public authorities with a more detailed picture of the mobile connectivity on these territories, which is why it's very helpful. And also, one thing that should be noted is that we do provide the third parties with a technical support prior to publishing um, this data. Indeed, we proofread uh, the technical specifications, we verify the consistency of the result, and we also help them analyzing the results. Um, a small disclaimer, though, I mean, these tests obviously provide a, a much more important density, uh, but they should be taken carefully because uh, obviously we do not have the same level of implication as we do with our yearly campaign 
on which we monitor everything from the beginning to the end. And each step we do monitor the results um, live almost every day when the campaign is being run. It is not the case for this campaign. Uh, so obviously one should be careful in attempting to uh, make KPIs out of the uh, uh, this data, data when it is published in open data. This was my final slide, so if you want to switch to the next slide, please, you could find uh, here on the last slide um, the useful links uh, that I've, of uh, the tools that I've mentioned in my presentation. Um, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for, again, um, to RCEP and the, uh, to Verek and to the OECD for inviting me. And I am now ready if you have any questions on uh, my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Audrey, for sharing with us our set insights of QoS and showing us with a real example that QoS can contribute to develop the market and to enable consumers to make more informed decisions and choices. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of questions that I would like to ask you. The first one, is our SEP planning on measuring 5G QoS? And if so, how, in which way? And there's also another one, I will start with, I, I'll tell it, then we will ask the bottom them, please. Uh, what were the challenges, if there were any challenges, of course, in publishing third party tests on Monrezo Mobile? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, on 5G, uh, yes, obviously we do uh, plan to measure 5G both within the accessibility campaign and the QS campaign. We're actually still in the process of uh, studying how we're going to do that. Um, for accessibility campaign, for instance, that's going to be different because on the accessibility campaign, uh, we measure the ability to access a given network, so 3G, 4G, 5G. Um, obviously, we, I mean, we do set the mobile on a specific technology when we are uh, checking the capacity to access the network. And so obviously we're not going to be able to do that for 5G, at least at, when it's still on uh, not standalone. So we're going to have to, you know, find a way to uh, to avoid doing that. So that that's one of the challenges. Um, Another challenge, obviously, is to ask yourself, what is 5G? And also, do we consider, for instance, if some operators launch 5G only using uh, the 700 uh, uh, megahertz band, do we still consider that as 5G or not? So that's going to be that these are some of the questions that we need to ask ourselves. Uh, on the QoS campaign, uh, obviously, we are again still trying to see how we're going to be able to uh, to measure uh 5g uh experience but what i can tell you is that we're really putting ourselves in the shoes of the users and we're going to try to uh, as for the other tests that i've mentioned try to uh to uh, really measure real life situation with you know regular mobile regular sim cards etc uh, on the second question about the difficulties in integrating uh, third parties measurements to Moreso Mobile, um, yes, we've had a, a bit of challenges. Uh, first of all, because uh, the regulators kit uh, actually displayed some uh, technical specifications that were ready to use by these third parties, but we kind of realized that this wasn't enough because uh, when selecting the offers by uh, the measurement actors, sometimes these measurement actors would make offers um, uh, not respectfully, not respecting uh, very closely our indications because they would want to offer more measurements for a, a, a lesser cost. And so we had to monitor really closely the choice that these third parties were doing. So now we're tr really trying to um, uh, get these third parties to get in touch with us as uh, early as possible so we can involve ourselves at, as early as possible in this process and providing you know this technical support all throughout the process. Because then when we publish the information in Mobile, um, the uh, operators are going to challenge uh, the results if they are not uh, done carefully and uh, and very uh, sticking uh, to the procedures that we do apply to our own campaigns. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Audrey. So, uh, the advantage for Barak to organize this webinar in collaboration with the OECD is that we can reach outside of it and gain inside on further national experiences. And if there is one country that stands out in communication technology, advanced networks, technology savvy users, and being head of the 5G development process, this is Korea. 
And all this is further reinforced by the consistent work that Korea has been doing on QoS and on the way to push operators to invest more to improve network capacity and cover. We are therefore delighted to have with us today Dr. Lee jong Vice President at the National Information Society Agency, NIA. And he will give us a view on the latest development on the quality evaluation of networks in Korea and on NIA work on QoS for the benefits of the Korean consumers and, benefit and business users. Please, Dr. Lee jong you have the floor. You have to switch on the mic. Please. Can you hear me? Yes. Please raise, raise hand. You hear? If you hear? Thank you. Uh, I'm very happy to be here to uh, thank and thank you very much for uh, inviting me to uh, this nice webinar. Uh, here, I would like to uh, introduce our experience and the uh, Korean way to uh, encourage the quality competition among operators in uh, Korean society. So uh, today, uh, well, uh, would you like to pump up my presentation? Uh, today's uh, my uh, topic of presentation is quality evaluation of uh, telecom services in Korea and the future direction. Next, please. Uh, my, uh, this is followed by the background and the procedure of evaluation. And, uh, and I would like to summarize the, uh, the result of the uh, uh, last year's quality evaluation. And then lastly, I would like to uh, uh, summarize the, some future plan and the uh, outcome of evaluation. Evaluation. Next, please. There has, there has been significant uh, quality gap in telecom services between urban and uh, rural area uh, by the fact that population and the investment, even though users pay equal uh, price, they got poor quality in the rural area Further, telecom operators do not provide sufficient uh, quality information uh, to their to their customer, uh, including uh, coverage information. So, Korea government uh, and NIA, Korea government and NIA uh, decided to uh, perform. QoS evaluation uh, and uh, uh, all the data uh, open to the public, uh, including the uh, quality and the coverage information. So it's very uh, practical way to uh, enhance the quality of services, even uh, encourage the competition among uh, operators uh, in local area. Next slide. So from now on, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, all the procedure of uh, quality uh, evaluation that is divided into four steps uh, to make it relevant. Step one, uh, selection of the uh, target uh, services. We selected uh, both three wired and uh, three wireless uh, services. What do you measure? Uh, we thought that measuring the best technical capacity do not useful, even uh, do not make sense to the end users. But we got to know uh, Every most of end users wanted to wanted the real quality of their own devices from data sources. So uh, user experience, real most 
close to the user experience is most very important for for us to drive the operators to upgrade their quality of services. And we and then we we move to step two. Uh, establishment of a measurement scheme. Uh, NIA organized a working group uh, that is independent on stakeholders to secure relevance of a whole processes. So working group is, uh, member of working group is from uh, a variety of the social positions, including uh, the end users and uh, professors and the operators and the others to determine uh, measuring the terminal uh, and then to uh, determine method and the metrics, parameters, uh, and then to set up the final uh, evaluation plan to make uh, it relevant to the data from the measurement should be uh, relevant to all of the peoples. Next, please. This page shown, shows what the way we did to measure QoS. At first, we uh, installed the measurement servers at the uh, IDC of each uh, service providers. And then uh, uh, we installed the high capacity of uh, link from the end devices to the measuring servers to prevent network jamming, jamming and to secure sufficient capacity. And then uh, the real end devices, for instance, smartphone and uh, laptop computer were provided to the field test engineers uh, or personals, uh, personal computers, recent model of personal computers are given to the uh, field test engineers. Next, please. Regarding the, uh, the metrics, or parameters, we selected uh, the six metrics for wireless and the three metrics for wired according to the international standard ITU and IETF. We designed all the, uh, the parameters uh, where you see it in, in the table, on the table. The one thing Special for 5G, uh, this year, uh, one more metrics were added. Come, come back, just come back to the previous pages. Come back to pre previous page. <laughs> okay, thank you. So we added the only, uh, the one, uh, parameters for the 5G, named by redirection uh, rate. This shows the uh, switching from 5G to 4G ratio. So uh, if you see the next page, uh, why we choose the, this parameter to measure the 5G. So uh, in the beginning stage of the 5G services, you can see the uh, some uh, dot island uh, along the ocean of uh, 4G. Uh, so, uh, especially for 5G measurement, uh, we introduce new items 
uh, as I mentioned before, redirection ratio. That means 5G coverage area looks like just the island surrounded by 4G LT ocean. So we can see frequent uh, connection uh, on and off or back and forth between 5G and the 4G. So we see bigger uh, uh, the redirection rate. So it causes low quality and uh, it causes, I think, uh, the users have a uh, feels like the, it has uh, not, they, they do not enjoy the sufficient quality of service from 5G. So we uh, selected the redirection rate at first this year. Next, please. So uh, step three uh, the, uh, is to perform field tour and the measurement. And uh, we first uh, we introduced uh, by population density, uh, such as uh, metropolitan, middle to small city and uh, rural areas. So uh, the population city, uh, populated cities, in case of popular cities, uh, the competition is uh, a lot of competitions uh, there are in, in the cities, but in rural areas, uh, most uh, area of the operators do not want to invest the big money to such a, uh, remote areas. So we selected uh, the density and the rural areas both. And the second by reason type. Uh, we selected uh, the transportation facility, underground shops, and the market, and the hospitals in the, uh, the metropolitan areas. So th they must, there must, they may, may be some difference in quality of services. Uh, where they are, where, where they stay, where, where are going, they, they, that makes some uh, difference in quality. So uh, next is the by sport and the leisure area, such as island and the sea road and the coastal road and the trails, even trails. So lastly, by public transportation during the, uh, the uh, mo mo mobile stages, such as high speed railroad and the city subway and the highways. So by doing this, we could cover whole land of the uh, areas uh, people are living. So we can check, we could check the difference of qualities uh, among them. Next, please. And uh, next step is collection of data and validation. At first, uh, we uh, uh, performed free review meetings with the third party expert with no regard to the opinion from the operators. So there may be some bias uh, on data, so, so we excluded the opinion of the uh, providers and then checked the devices and the measurement, the measurement the software errors to get rid of the, uh, some uh, abnormal uh, data outliers, and then we uh, move, uh, re removed the error data under the abnormal conditions during the uh, some accident or some uh, disturbance in the lo local areas. And lastly, validate whole process and the reportings to make it sense, make the, uh, the good data, pure data to uh, know, to cut People know the fact uh, uh, after all gathering, uh, gathering all the data of the uh, test result. Yeah, that's all uh, we did uh, in uh, measuring the QoS in Korea. So this shows this table shows the, some uh, outcome uh, of the uh, last year. So we. Uh, 
as you may you, you see uh, on the tables, the download speed of LTE was more than 158 megabit per second. Compare that uh, 150 uh, megabit per second last uh, in uh, uh, 2018 slightly uh, improved. Uh, we showed, and uh, in case of the 3G, five more than five megabits Wi-Fi, 300s. And all, et cetera, we gathered all the data and uh, the, opened all the data to the public to uh, make users select the right operators uh, and then to help them with the wise choice in, in the uh, competition uh, market. So in case of the quality of wired internet services, we recorded the, the uh, the 99.27 megabit per cent in case of one uh, megabit per second services. And uh, even one gigabit per second services, we uh, can, could see the more than 900 megabit per second. So it is extremely high compared to that of the, the other countries. But uh, uh, this, uh, make some, uh, uh, you know, the uh, peoples the have, uh, people have uh, their own right to uh, know the quality of the services they use to enhance the, pu the purpose of the measurement is to, in is to enhance the user's right and the user's uh, knowledge to choose the best services in Korea. Next, please. So outcomes, uh, uh, if I summarize the outcomes of the, our measurement, the year uh, by year, we uh, recorded some slight, uh, some, you know, the increase of quality, improvement of quality uh, so, uh, actually, the, the first uh, beginning of the quality measurement was 1999. So, we have more than uh, 20 years of history in uh, measuring the quality of services of telecom services, even voice services to the uh, 5G mobile services. So, uh, it, it uh, make uh, great sense to the policy makers and the end users to enhance the quality of services and to invest, uh, to encourage the investment of netto infrastructure uh, to, for their end users. Next, please. So this is the example of the, the announcement of, to the public. Uh, we opened the quality information to the public in various time uh, by providers, service, and the region. So uh, people who are living in the rural area or island area, they can uh, sometimes, uh, some, some of them claim they are low quality to the near the operators and then uh, the government uh, have some uh, you know the uh, role to uh, enhance the, the even quality of the rural areas so with the with, the, with the, uh, this data we have a very good tools to make them uh, invest the uh, network uh, infrastructure even in rural or island areas Yeah, uh, this all all all, uh, uh, all my presentation. Uh, thank you for your uh, invitation, and uh, thank you for your attention. Attention.
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lee Young Wong, for a very interesting and inspiring presentation. Can I just check? Was there? Did you want to also play a video, or is the is the presentation now complete? Yeah, I think it's up to you. Uh, to, if you have no time, uh, to, you can uh, use it rep by reference. Then, yes. Or it's up to you. Yeah. Yes. If we if we could if we could um, introduce that now, that would be great. And maybe if you want to give us a little bit of background to that video. Okay. So Mike, uh, Clegg said that uh, we just send our video clip file to you. Do you did you receive it? Video file? Yes, I believe we, we have it. Um, we did receive it. Thank you. OK.
Thank you for watching the, this humble video. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's a really informative video and really brings together all the work that's been done on, on the quality of service. Um, I suppose 5G is a very uh, topical um, uh, topic here and I see your last few slides there did refer to 5G um, and mm -hmm. your, your presentation also uh, referred to the redirection rate. I suppose just looking in the, the future, um, have you um, anything you can share with us with regard to plans for the future on quality of service and what you may add uh, to new aspects to, to the measurement, to the very comprehensive measurement that you currently undertake? Uh... The, we uh, the Korea announced uh, launched the 5G services last year. The, it has been one almost one year, and then the subscribe number of subscribe uh, of the 5G is more than five million. So this year, this half the uh, second half of this year, we are trying to measure the quality of the 5G service. Uh, uh, the, with the uh, with the addition of the redirection rate. So I'm not sure, but uh, we are developing the uh, parameters. What is the uh, actual uh, 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 good parameters to uh, check the quality of 5G services? So uh, the this is the hot topic in Korea, but uh, uh, actually the, uh, we do see the another uh, the parameters to represent the IoT and uh, the fast connection time. In case of, for example, in case of the, uh, the 5G basis uh, manufacturing, the first connection time is very critical to control the uh, manufacturing systems in case of a factory. So we now we are see the, what is the appropriate, uh, uh, appropriate uh, uh, parameters to check the uh, quality of 5G services. So anyway, this is the, our main concern uh, of this year. And the other factor of the quality is all the proven to the public in, in case of here. So may, maybe uh, we can be a uh, help to your uh, the pe people or countries uh, who want to uh, introduce a new system of quality measurement. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much, Dr. Lee Young, for that um presentation and also the, the um, offer of assistance. Um, the We have to say that Korea is really showing the way with quality of service and that you're indeed ahead of the curve when I think back to our work that Paula and I did on the quality of service and the slides that we presented from the end users working group as to the number of countries and the types of quality of service measures we have in place currently. Hopefully that will all improve with the introduction of our new legislation that's been transposed at the end of the year. However, um, I would like now to um, hand over to Paolo to maybe um, address a question that has been raised with regard to the Berwick work uh, before we hand back to uh, Don for uh, the closing remarks. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Teresa. Before ending over to Dan Schaublom, I'd like to, to give an answer to three questions that we have received from EETT, the Greek regulator, which are concerned with the Barrack presentation. And the first one is, I will group the first two because the answer is the same. The first question is why, after all the work of the corresponding group, European end user cannot find comparable QS results from the providers in a transparent way? 
And the second is you mentioned harmonized methodology according to QS measurement. But looking at the website of the European NRAs and you provided, someone understands that this is only at the theoretical level and not implemented. Well, I, I mean, as, as exactly a, a couple of seconds ago, Theresa has anticipated that these guidelines. Uh, the guidelines that we have uh, developed, that which are aimed at letting people, consumers, compare both at the national but also at the international level, uh, and the European Commission and all—I mean, all institutions—to compare the results on quality of service will enter into force only when the. European Electronic Communication Code will be transposed in national legislation. In this moment, and we all know that, that probably COVID-19 is also somehow is also an obstacle to, 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 uh, to a fast implementation of the code at the national level. So in this at this stage, and arrays are operating on the basis of the previous code. Um, the measures that we have developed actually are all measures aimed at, you know, promoting comparability. But the code clarifies that NRAs and other competent authorities may require the publication of indicators. So this is a, fac a faculty. They are empowered to do so. It's not prescribed on them to, 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 to do that. But of course, in case they do, they will have to adopt the, the measurement and standards and the indicators which are contained in the guidelines. So this may be the reason, as I told you, that the guidelines had to be to be drafted by the a couple of days ago, by the 21st of June. We anticipated that in order to let in anticipation all and erase member states and operators that, to make them aware well in advance that they will be uh, that they will be publishing if required that kind of information. So this might be the reason why at this stage uh, there are difficulties in finding comparable information. And uh, the third question is on the difficulty to standardize the certified measurement procedure. Uh, and I mean uh, the, the difficulties. I mean, uh, 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 defining certified measurement methods. Well, we are well aware of that because we discussed a lot within the, the group on this thing. We must take, however, into account that first of all, also as I mean, of course, are um, uh, the possibility of publishing um, information is not a requirement. I mean, an race are not required to impose, to ask operators to publish it. And therefore, that means that also quality uh, certification mechanism are not something that has to be imposed. And uh, but we have also to consider that the, the, guy, the, the code was not asking us how to standardize this procedure. In the guidelines, we, I mean, uh, simply uh, clarified what, I mean, what we mean by quality certification mechanism, clarified the requirement for, uh, for uh, um, subject agents to be a quality uh, certification uh, actors, those who can certify the quality and then we define uh, some characteristics that this quality measurement had to have like accuracy the possibility of comparison results the openness the safety the future properness and accessibility i hope this uh, answers the questions and at this point i will leave the, i will over to dan Schoblum for the concluding remarks please Dan, you have the floor If I may comment first on the uh, certification. So this is, uh, again, Klaus Nieminen from Open Internet Working Group. I would also like to add that uh, definitely this is a topic that we're 
continue to work on that basically the NRAs want to share their practices information and we want to help NRAs have reaching a common position and common practices regarding this however as mentioned by um, previous speaker basically it's still up to the NRAs to make the decision if they want to certify a mechanism or not and we are well targeting to get this done and, and reaching more and more harmonized European approach but uh, as mentioned uh, by Paula I mean the, the certification itself is quite easy but uh, to make uh, let's say the, the tool accurate and uh, to take into account all the relevant factors that's bad that's a bit more tricky and I would say that it's also something that evolves all the time because we are getting hopefully better and better measurement methods and methodologies and, and tools so let's say that what was available for us five years ago it's already quite old we are getting faster speeds new technologies so let's say that it's there a topic we need to work on I mean it's not something that can be fi uh, finished uh, let's say someday and say it's going to be that for next 10 years thanks thank you Klaus for your clarification and comment I will then leave to I will end over to Dan okay I see that the chat is now empty of new requests for the floor thank you very much to everyone who has uh, participated uh, all speakers i said in introducing uh, from our side that uh, uh, the the purpose was to uh, share experiences i find that sharing experience is always the best way of bringing work forward and i think we've come far far in this i have certainly gained a lot better understanding of the bigger perspective and the ways that we can work and the benefits you can have of working with with qns uh, and i hope that that is true for many of you as well uh, i know that many of you will have other meetings in like seven minutes that's the that's the norm these days that we have back-to-back -back video meetings uh, so i will not uh, delay this very much i will just remind you again please don't forget to come back next tuesday same place same uh, time for the second webinar uh, and i think that will be uh, de deepening uh, the uh, experience and understanding even more so final word thank you very much to the organizers who have set up our uh, webinar and ensure that it ran so well and for everyone in who have spoken and shared experiences uh, and especially to Paolo and Teresa of course who not only shared their experience but also uh, moderated the session. Thank you all for uh, participating, stay safe and see you next week. Bye bye.